Okay, so today here we have Salix OS. Now, I've actually gone to the actual website this time to have a look at their distribution because initially I couldn't quite catch what the distribution was based on. And then I remembered, oh yes, it's Slackware. Now, Slackware is a very old package management system. Slackware has been around for a long, long time. It is by no means old or antiquated, but it is an extremely fast package management system and it dates back to the early 90s, I believe. So Salix OS is built on Slackware and you, there's different editions you can download, the XFCE, LXDE, Fluxbox and KDE. Now I've already had a look at LXDE, XFCE and KDE desktop environments before so I thought I'd give the Fluxbox version a go. Now you need to be careful because it's similar to Partis here, there's an installation disk image and there's a live disk image. The installation is slightly smaller than the live disk the live disk also includes a graphical installer, whereas the installer CD is just an N cursor based installer. Now, if you know what you're doing, that's no problem, but uh, for beginners, I would probably recommend the live disk image anyway. So, the main features that they try and focus on are one application per task on the installation ISO, full backwards compatible with Slackware, optimized for desktop usage, high quality package repositories with dependency support, incredibly fast package tools, I agree with them there, simple and fully localized system for administration tools, nice artwork, installation ISO fits on a single CD, and it supports both architectures. So they've got a very nice website if you need to check that out before you install etc. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so here we have Salix OS. Now, first of all, the artwork is very nice. The default backgrounds that they give you are actually pretty cool. They've got quite a few penguin ones as well as the surreal sunsets, which uh, they've got different colors. So I think I might leave it on that one because that one's very nice indeed. But these are all just custom wallpapers that they've made for this distribution. And I love it when distributions make their own wallpapers that look nice and they're quite distinguished works of art in their own right. So what is Fluxbox all about? Well basically Fluxbox is a lightweight system once again. You could compare it to LXDE but it's more independent of the GTK libraries. So in order to access the menu it will vary with various Fluxbox distributions. Sometimes you'll single click with the uh, left click and other times you'll right click. So in Salix you right click and basically this is what this is the main menu that you work off. So you can see here we've got file manager, terminal and a browser. Those are your shortcuts. Then you've got runner program which is the classic Alt F2 type deal. And then you've got accessories and under accessories you have archive manager, character map, calculator, GNU privacy assistant, leaf pad, Parcelite, PC Man FM. I'm not going to try to say that one. It looks like URXVT, whatever that is. SCIM and SCIM input method, which is those are for Chinese characters and Asian localization. So first of all, let's have a look under this URXVT one. And of course, it's the terminal. I should have remembered that. My bad. We've also got LeafPad, which is the default text editor from LXDE. As you can see, it's not a whole lot different from the text editor that we all know and love from the lightweight distributions so it's not really an issue there and of course we have our parcelite which is a lightweight clipboard manager which sits down here in the system tray and you can as we, again when you copy paste items it'll appear down here now I found the RAM usage on this one to be slightly lighter than the one that came with Debian 6 that I reviewed previously um, and you can also see we have PC Man FM instead of Thuna, which of course Thuna being the default for, for XFCE. So PC Man FM, we're all familiar with this, I should think by now. Very easy to understand, no real issues here. Again, it's come a long way in the short time that it's been developed compared to Thuna. It's almost equivalent, I would say, with uh, Thuna. I don't foresee any issues with using this. I even use this browser as a file browser on regular GNOME just because of the fact it's a lot faster and uh, it doesn't take up as much time with thumbnailing etc. So let's just quickly talk about the look and feel because I realized I skipped that at the beginning but I don't want to be doing look and feel every time at the beginning. But you can see it's pretty basic theme really. Um, again they've got different styles that you can choose from that are just give you a simple change in dialog boxes similar to LXD the, the open box window manager because I believe that's what it uses 
So you can choose different themes until you are content. Now for the sake of continuity we'll go back to the standard theme and we'll select the standard background or one of the standard backgrounds and we'll continue on with the program shall we? We've got our archive manager and we've got the Chinese input character management. Under development we have Genie. Now Genie Genie is obviously a fast and lightweight IDE editor. So basically you can do some you can do a lot of development work here. This is like a text editor with a whole bunch of extra tools on top of it. So very helpful. I'm tending to think that they're expecting experienced users with uh, Salix OS as um, let's face it Ubuntu and Mint aren't going to include something like this by default anytime soon. But sticking to their principle of one application per task, they're doing a good job. Under graphics we have the document viewer, we have the GIMP, and we have simple scan, and we have view noir, which is just the standard image viewer. So document viewer, it's the same one that comes on all the GNOME distros, events is worldwide, it's popular, very popular. Nearly every distro that isn't a KDE distro is going to ship with events. And of course view noir, which is the image viewer. Again, the feature set is a bit more limited than others, but it's only supposed to be an image viewer. So it's quick, it'll get the job done, no worries at all. We have Simple Scan, which everybody knows Simple Scan. I'm glad to see they've included this. Some lightweight distros like to go for Xane, which isn't as user friendly in my opinion. With Simple Scan, it's easy. You slap that piece of paper on the scanner, you click scan, and it'll do the rest for you. You can crop and rotate, etc. You've probably seen this before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And of course we have GIMP. Now GIMP is the image editor that we all know and love, so it's great to see they've included that. And I won't spend any more time on GIMP. Okay, multimedia. We have Asunder CD Ripper. We have Brasero Disk Burning. We have Excel. We have the Volti Mixer. And we have the Hua Amp. Let's zoom out a bit. Okay. The Hua media player is obviously just a simple media player that is based on GStreamer. No worries at all. And Exhale, we all know what Exhale is about. Exhale is a lovely lightweight music manager. It can handle playlists and radios and lyric files, etc. And it can automatically update collections and such like. Great music player. I don't have any complaints here. That's a good choice. Brasero disc burning. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, I think, I'm not sure. I personally probably would have gone for XF burn as it's a bit lighter, but you know, Brasero disc burner is very simple. It's easy to use. It's what a lot of people are used to, so that's what it is important. And of course, Asunder CD Ripper, which is the favorite application of a lot of long-time Linux users. And then, of course, we have the Vaulting Mixer, which is pretty cool. It looks like we have a, quite an advanced audio mixer here for something that is generally not seen in a lot of distributions. So it's good to see they've actually included something like that. You can see you've got different categories here, line-in, CD, microphone, video phone, beep auxiliary, and capture, which is all pretty awesome. Moving right along, we have Claws Mail, we have Firefox, G GFTP, Endless Wireless Drivers, Pigeon Instant Messenger Transmission, and of course your Wireless Network Manager. Now, they have done a great job with the network tools here. They've included things like the Endless Wrapper for Wireless Drivers, which is great for those on old laptops because, let's face it, a lot of old Wi-Fi chips just aren't supported under the Linux kernel, so it's great to see they've done that. Pigeon Instant Messenger, everybody loves Pigeon. Transmission BitTorrent Client, we all know what that is. And of course, the Wireless Network Manager. Now, the Wireless Network Manager is the same one that we saw on XFCE on, with the Debian 6. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it there. We all know how that works. Clause Mail. Now, this appears to be the mail client that is by Mozilla. And of course, we have Firefox. And Firefox is at version... 3.6.12, which is the latest stable 3.6. So I'm not sure about this one. I've got mixed feelings. Um, honestly, Firefox 3.6 I don't have a problem with. 
but I don't know, in the vein of trying to be lightweight, I may have wanted to include something like Midori, but I understand that Midori isn't as stable as what Firefox 3.6.12 would be. So no real issues there. Everybody loves Firefox, or at least most of them do. And of course, Office. We have the full open Office suite. What more could you ask for? Now, it looks like we've got the old branded Sun Microsystems splash screen, and we're running 3.2. So that's the latest stable open Office. Um, I'm not sure. I think eventually we'll see widespread adoption of LibreOffice, unless, of course, we have some people who are quite heavily set on Oracle's offering. So let's have a look through system. Now, the first thing I want to cover here is you've got the GDM setup um, configuration tool, which is very helpful for configuring your login screen. But I want to talk about the GSLAPT package manager because this is the beauty of Slackware. Now, if you want to go way back, OpenSUSE was once based on Slackware, but they have since, of course, um, become a base of their own. Now, GSLAPT is a very impressive package manager. It unpacks and installs packages extremely fast, and that is the beauty of Slackware. And of course, just like any other package management, you can manage this one from the command line if you so wish. Um, it's very simple. It's a rolling it's a rolling release as well. So you just hit mark all upgrades and hit the apply, and away it goes. Now, in far, as far as installing applications, it's simple. You just search for the package, GIMP, and you see that it's already installed. But if it wasn't, you just hit... Uh, install and then apply so it's very similar to synaptic there's no issues here whatsoever in fact i would almost say they've done a good job in making it simpler than synaptic that's g slapped package manager and the package management of slackware based distros like salix is what you're really going to notice as different from a lot of mainstream distributions so here we've got different things like host names htop keyboard lilo setup which is their bootloader Good to see Lilo back again. Not many distributions use it nowadays, unfortunately. Lock screen, manage printing, new login in a window, pop-up notifications, rebuild icon cache. Very useful tool. System clock, system language, system services, users and groups, and screensavers. So we'll have a look under screensavers. And yes, we have the X screensavers. Uh, so as you can see, a bunch of different screensavers here to choose from. I'm not going to even start covering some of them because I'll be here all day. Now, you, as you can probably tell, Fluxbox is an extremely minimalist desktop environment. You can see that we've only got the panel down the bottom here that is a simple bar that holds your windows. And then, of course, along the bottom here, we have the clipboard manager, the volume, and your network manager and the time. The rest is completely empty. There is nothing else on this desktop. Plenty of room for all your windows and open applications. Under system, we also have Gigolo, which is the uh, connection manager to remote file systems, such as CD drives, as you can see here, or even things such as FTP servers or Samba shares, etc. Good that they've included that. And we also have .new, which is a configuration file editor or creator. Now, you can see here that by default, the Salix OS is using 95 megs of the 1 gig of memory that I gave it. So it's not quite as light as what uh, Debian XFCE was, but having said that, there are a few more meaty applications in here that would owe to it being slightly heavier. Still incredibly lightweight. If you have a system that is an old Pentium machine or one with limited RAM, definitely try Fluxbox uh, in whatever distribution you like. I know Mint has a very good Fluxbox version. Uh, Salix does as well. And there are quite a few other Fluxbox distributions. It's not quite as widespread as uh, LXD and XFC. Having said that, there are some things to be gained with its minimalist approach to the desktop. And Salix partners with that perfectly by offering one application per task in a very nice user experience that the icons are well known, the background is lovely, the theme is easy to understand. Quite honestly, there is not a lot to complain about at all. So good release on part of the Salix team. They do a great job with their different distributions and desktop environments. And I seriously think that that is a way that most distributions should go. Offer as many desktop environments as they can. And by doing that, they offer viable alternatives like the Fluxbox desktop environment for those who want a lightweight and minimalist distro 
And if you were to choose Salix, you of course get the benefits of an extremely fast package manager and general system performance all around. Great release, I don't have any stability issues with it. For older hardware, this one is definitely a winner. It gives you great applications, simple desktop environment, and the sheer speed of Slackware-based packages.